Good afternoon. Welcome to this afternoon's edition of the Rich Urban Show. I'm your host, Richard Urban, coming to you from historic Harpers Ferry, West Virginia. Today's episode is Stop the Prosecution of Krauss and Jackson. Let's get started by reading the letter that I wrote, the open letter recently to Prosecutor Matt Harvey. Dear Prosecutor Harvey, this is an open letter to question and analyze why you are continuing with the petition to remove my local commissioner, Tricia Jackson, as well as my commissioner, Jennifer Krause. Ostensibly, your action was to compel Jackson and Krause to return to work. Now that they've returned to work, why have you not dropped this petition? Is it your job to determine who the rightfully elected representatives of Jefferson County residents are? No, it is not. This is the job of the voters. I, as a voter, do not want Commissioner Jackson and Commissioner Krause removed. Also, you bring charges against Jackson and Krause as if they have committed some crime, when in fact their actions were protests against corrupt activities by a government official. Would not the normal order of business be for a crime to have occurred, and then for a jury of peers to decide that is indeed the case? The Constitution provides for a clear separation of powers. Voters should decide about matters regarding elected officials. Yet without any criminal activity occurring, you're seeking to remove my elected officials from office. This is wrong. It's also very ironic that the person who is the instigating cause for the protest against action of Jackson Krause is actually the person who has huge conflicts of interest. Even if they do not rise to the legal definition of a crime, which, as we know, is open to interpretation, they still certainly are conflicts of interest. These conflicts of interest affect the welfare and well-being of all citizens of Jefferson County. Should not this be acknowledged and probed further to see if the financial interest of Stolifer and solar development is self-dealing that causes harm to citizens of Jefferson County? In your petition, you cover extensively how Jackson and Krause are only thinking about their own agenda. However, that is false. They are thinking about the well-being of the whole county and its residents, not just a select few people. One thing you did not mention at all in your petition is the main reason that the entire situation came about to begin with. That one thing is the railroading of industrial solar development in Jefferson County by Steve Stolliver and his cronies. The main action that is behind this whole situation are Stolliver's refusal to put discussion of the solar text amendment on the county commission agenda. No doubt, Stolliver was not happy with the removal of the solar tax amendment by Jackson and Krause's votes on September 7, 2023. One point you should investigate is the huge conflicts of interest that Stolliver undeniably has. Whether some ethics committee panel decides that conflicts of interest rise to their interpretation of being legally acceptable, there's still conflicts of interest. To give a current example, President Biden continues to say that he has no conflicts of interest regarding his decision-making process. It is an incontrovertible fact that he has many conflicts of interest with regards to payments to his family from foreign entities in Ukraine, China, and other locations. Stolfer has multiple conflicts of interest regarding solar development. First, as a real estate agent, he makes commissions off of the sale or leasing of properties. Since solar farm leases are for up to 35 years, this will be a substantial amount. For example, if the real estate agent negotiating the $15 million $600,000 35-year lease for the Wild Hill Solar Project hypothetically received just a 3% commission that would amount to $468,000. The current comprehensive plan specifies preserving the rural nature of Jefferson County and does not in support industrial-scale solar farms on rural lands. County Judge Deborah McLaughlin expressed this in striking down the April 21, 2021 comprehensive plan text amendment. By lobbying during 2022 legislative session for HB 4553, Stauffer is supporting state legislation that attempts to skirt local zoning regulations by allowing solar farms in any zoning district anywhere in the state as a matter of right. This is in direct contradiction to his responsibility as a county commissioner to represent the best interests of all of his constituents, not just a handful of large landowners and farmers. In other words, this lobbying is self-dealing. In conclusion, I urge you to drop this petition attempting to remove County Commissioners Jackson and Krause. They've been looking out for the best interests of all of the citizens in Jefferson County. 
If voters want to remove Jackson Krause, they'll decide that issue at the ballot box at their next re-election. Sincerely, Richard Urban, Shenandoah, Harpers Ferry, West Virginia. Let's have a look at what I'm talking about in the letter here. And I do want to wish you a very happy new year. This is the last day of the new year when I'm recording this. So I urge you to call Prosecutor Harvey at 304-728-3243. That's 304-728-3243. Ask to speak to him. He is approachable. And tell him why you do not want your county commissioners, Krause and Jackson, removed. You can also email him at P, as in prosecutor, A, as in attorney, office, PA office at jeffersoncountywv.org. It would be best to call him, though. That will be more effective. So this is a political action, meaning it's a biased political action. So let's say that our new commissioner, Pasha Majdi, or Commissioner Stolifer, or Commissioner Tab did the same exact thing that Krauss and Jackson did. Would he be prosecuting them? This, I think, is the fairness test right there. And unequivocally, no, he would not be prosecuting them. I guarantee it. So this is political. This is a political move. It's a political move where Stolifer wants to solidify his position. I'm not sure what's up with Jane Tab. You know, I uh, will be contacting her, and I urge you to do the same. She originally was against solar in the past when it was up for, um, in 2021. She said she wasn't for rushing into solar. Why she's so for it now, I don't know. And then Majdi, uh, he says he wants to have hearings. Well, I hope he does does that. We need to have hearings. I'd say the number one issue is, well, first of all, the citizens of this county do not want industrial solar, period. If you're not sure, how about doing an unbiased survey and finding out? I think you already know that. This benefits a very few people, people like Stolifer, people like large landowners. You know, like the cables or other people like that who sold land. It has nothing to do with helping struggling farmers. Zero. Nothing. A lot of the lands were sold anyway. So going to that, in that angle, as I pointed out in my previous show about the harm, aesthetic and environmental damage being done by these industrial solar farms, they're not in line with the comprehensive plan. And... There'll be comprehensive plan meetings this coming month in January, and I urge you and myself, of course, to attend those meetings and make it known that, as it was already known what, and stated in the comprehensive plan in 2014, that we want a county that is balanced in agriculture and other development. Industrial solar is not balanced. It's not a compatible use of farmland. It ruins good farmland, and it's a very disingenuous argument saying, oh, in 35 years, we'll put it back to farmland. There's zero examples of that happening. No, who's to say that the land won't be contaminated with lead or other toxic metals that seeped out of the solar panel? Almost certainly it will be. How are those solar panels going to remain sealed up for 35 years? They're not. Water's going to leak in, and it's going to leak out and the toxic chemicals will leak out. How about the soil runoff? Already I posted pictures of the soil runoff and the violations of the Department of uh, Environment, stormwater, and we still need to see those storm stormwater requirements, stormwater reports. So is there a place for solar in Jefferson County? Sure. What's wrong with having solar on the Millville Quarry? I don't think anybody's going to complain about that. How about on the county dump? You think some neighbors are going to complain, oh, the county dump is uh, ruining the, the beautiful landscape with solar panels. I don't think so. Those are kind of areas where it makes sense to have solar panels. Or maybe at a small scale at some substation that's already existing. Not ruining our fertile, valuable, and irreplaceable state farmland. 
state recognized farmland, as I pointed out in my last show. So this is political. So Mr. Harvey, drop your petition. Unless you want to be competing with the prosecutors or going after Donald Trump, like uh, Miss Willis in Georgia or the infamous Jack Smith, I don't think you want to do these kind of political prosecutions. This is political. Was not your motivation to return Krauss and Jackson to work? Has that not been accomplished by writs that were forcing the bonds to be released and the orders of the judge in that case? So why are you still pursuing your case? Is there something else going on? I already said, yeah, there's something going on. This wouldn't be happening to Stolliver or Tab if they did exactly the same thing. And it's not necessary, and it's not your position to be doing the, doing these kind of um, activities, these political activities. You know, that's the kind of thing that's become popular nationwide now, popular, quote-unquote, by people who don't want to follow legal processes, as I said, like in... President Trump's case, but that shouldn't be your case. Not not at all. I also do want to say, you know, with uh, Trisha Jackson, um, I do support her. That I'm glad she could, you know, think more about the solar issue and change her mind on that. I am a, a disappointed personally that she's not finishing, or well, we don't know actually what whether she'll finish her term as commissioner or not. Not because of Harvey I'm talking about, but because Trish is running for a state auditor. I personally like people to finish out their commitments. So that's my personal uh, belief there. You know, they should finish the uh, commitments that they have. And also the voters need to decide about these matters. So if anything needs to be investigated, it's like conflicts of interest, like those that Stolifer has. And this whole issue of solar has to be reopened. You know, I think I'm like many people. Yeah, I was aware solar was coming on. Yeah, I sent some stuff to Commissioner Jackson. And uh, I guess she ignored it or decided not to do it. I didn't hear back from her. Before solar was approved, I said there are problems in other counties, like I've described in my last couple shows. The, there is environmental damage, and it's a bad idea. And she didn't listen, but at least... She was able to change her mind on the issue. So, you know, that's a, that's a good thing. So I think we need to, well, that is a good point, too. We should be able to change our mind on the issue. And also, I want to say what I was getting at is that a lot of people didn't realize, like, how it would really look and how it would be implemented. Is it carefully implemented where they try to put the solar panel and they leave the natural uh, vegetation. No, not at all. Everything is graded. Everything is, uh, how do you say, all the soil is disturbed and a lot of the soil on the um, Blake Solar Project site, I'd say about at least 25%, as I discussed in my previous show, the one before this, so please go back and listen to that if you didn't, has been graded. They cut down the hills because the, uh, over a 10% slope is not good for solar farms. So again, if we do have any kind of solar ordinance, this one needs to be rescinded. It's not in line with the comprehensive plan. And in fact, the previous judge, Deborah McLaughlin, already said it wasn't legal. So I'm not sure, you know, uh, why that case was dropped, but it needs to be brought back up. We need to sue the county again. We, the people, you know, maybe that's what we, the people, should be doing over at the We, the People meeting thinking about suing the county instead of pursuing these crazy policies so we can get good policies. Why sue the county? Because they're not following the comprehensive plan. Because they're bringing solar industrial development that benefits a couple of people. That's a bad idea. Because Representative Clark decided he wants to sponsor a bill to undercut our zoning laws. What's that about? That's wrong. That would be Wayne Clark. We don't want industrial solar. It's a bad idea. So that's my message for tonight. We need to stick with this. Be civically engaged. It's not like a burden. It's a, a type of joy to get involved and, you know, make your voice heard. So, again, do call 
Matt Harvey, his number is 304-728-3243. Tell him, ask to speak to him. But tell him you do not want the removal of Kraus and Jackson. That's not his job. And that, in fact, they were doing something for the county. And, in fact, that's a political move. And he should be focusing on things like catching the people who are breaking into local businesses or focusing more on who's bringing drugs in that are killing young people. I'm seeing obituaries for 22-year-olds here in the spirit of Jefferson, probably killed by fentanyl. Shouldn't you be focusing on that more? I know you're on that new panel. Well, isn't that what you should be focusing on? Not removing our duly elected officials? Okay, so do call uh, Matt Harvey, 304 3243 You can uh, email him too. Calling is better. P-A, P like Paul, A like Apple, office at Jefferson County, WB.org. I'm your host, Richard Urban, coming from Stark Harvey Spirit Ferry. I hope you do have a very happy new year, or you are having a happy new year when you listen to this. Check my other shows. They're all available now on podcast platforms going all the way back to the beginning of the COVID crisis. So you can get my opinion on a lot of issues. And I hope you'll also comment on our website, visionroot.org, or comment and like on your favorite podcast platform and subscribe there. Thanks for listening. We'll see you in the new year. God bless and see you next time.